Welcome back to another episode of the Higher Level Podcast. Um, so on the show tonight, co-hosting with me, we have Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt, Higher Level Zone, Danny Gray. And our special guest in the show, we have a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu legend, mixed martial arts legend, one of the founders of a Brazilian top team, former UFC middleweight champion, Marillo Bussamante. Uh, so it was, really was a pleasure to have him on the show and chat to him, speaking about uh, his days in Pride, um, forming the Brazilian uh, top team. It, it was a, a really fun chat. We really enjoyed it. So I hope you guys enjoy it too. So first of all, Marillo, thank you very much for coming on and uh, chatting to myself and Danny. It's a uh, it really is. It's our pleasure to have have you on the show and, and chatting to us for a while. Thank you guys for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, yeah. You know, always available to talk about jiu-jitsu and martial arts. <laughs> and ju- just before we ask you a bit about your career in um, jiu-jitsu and, and MMA, I just uh, I wanted to ask you about the current situation we're in, we're in globally uh, with the pandemic and w- what sort of effect that's had on you over, over this last year in terms of your academies and seminars and all of that. How how big an impact has that had on you? Oh, it's affect me very much. All my business affect my you know my teammates, all my affiliates around the world. Uh, it's uh, it was terrible for the market. I know that a lot of academies closed the doors for goods around the world. You know, not only in Brazil but in US as well. Small academies couldn't couldn't handle. You know the, the 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 rough time. It's too sad. Uh, everybody, you know, closed the doors for a while. We have uh, lockdown in Brazil, as it happened in, in you know most of countries. So I believe still uh, we have still uh, uh, we have affiliate that still have the the doors closed in England. I don't know if they're ready reopen so it's just sad you know so it affects the market affect the business uh, I used to travel to make tours seminar tours to visit my associates around the world to visit different academies teaching around the world so this year I cancel everything so the tournaments uh, restarted a couple months ago I think it restarted it August of September, uh, I'm not sure, but it was good for business. You know, people got motivated, returned to training. So it affected the business in general. You know, not I mean, it affected the, the the whole economy, the global economy worldwide. So it was very hard, but uh, we did our best to, to to handle the situation. You know, to 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 support our teammates the best we could. We got a lot of support for our customers. Our students supported a lot our academies around the world. So it was very good. So it was a, a big proof of loyalty. So, you know, we're very thankful for our students, what they did. So, we, you know, we, we kind of uh, giving back all payments they made during the quarantine, uh, during the, uh, you know, the time we doors were closed, so kind of compensating them for the effort that they made to help us. So it's you know it is, is uh, my team we have uh, in mind and the philosophy that you are a big family. So it was very important during this time. So we, uh, thanks God we're passing this the, the worst time, and you know. We're ready to move on. I, I really believe that uh, 2021 will be uh, one of the best years for the business. You know, I, I believe the market will be returned very strong. So yeah. I, 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 
I believe that people realize how important is the martial arts and jiu-jitsu martial arts in their lives, how good it is, how, how you know, uh, they recognize the benefits that it have been, you know, bringing for their lives, you know, like not only the, the techniques, but the mentally benefits, the, the therapy, you know, so the community is a very strong community. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu community is very strong, very f- friendly. So it was, you know, it was, uh, it was good for us, you know, our Christmas was really great. So I'm very thankful for that. Perfect. And, and Manolo, I'd like to just bring Danny in at this point. Um, da- Danny's, a, Danny's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt himself, and he's one of the, the teacher over, teachers over at a higher level, mixed martial arts in Scotland. So I'm sure Danny would like to ask you some questions about uh, your Jiu-Jitsu career and your, ju- your journey in Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. a ple- pleasure to speak to you, Manolo. I've been a big fan for, for a long time. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I have, I have loads of questions. I think... Uh, one of the questions was going to be just how do you train yourself nowadays? What do you, how do you favor your training? Do you still train hard? Do you more kind of flow roll? You know, what's the kind of advice for longevity in the sport? So, uh, the quarantine affect a little bit my routine, you know. Uh, I keep doing physical training during the quarantine. I couldn't train jiu-jitsu because I was in home, locked down. Uh, but before the quarantine, I used to train four, three times a week with my students, and, you know, in, in, in group classes, big group classes. But now after this, you know, the pandemic, yeah, no, not after, but uh, in the ending, you know, it's not finished yet, but during this time, uh, I have been choosing my partners, I kind of training more with my private students. Mm-hmm. So you know, I use my private students to be my, you know, my training sessions. I train yeah, myself yeah. with them. It is good, you know. So we train together, and I, I didn't return to teach uh, big group classes yet. So I'm teaching small group classes. So I'm not working with the professionals anymore. I kind of retired. Uh, but I, I used to train with them before, you know, training with help. I, I, I mean, I, I retire as a coach, but I am still helping. I, I have my student, one of my students, uh, Victor, coaching the professional team of Brazilian top team, uh, Rio. And I kind of help him, you know, give me advice, uh, sometimes teaching the classes, uh, but I not had the obligation to be every day. So I want, sometimes I go there, train and roll with the guys, you know, give some advice. So it's not something I, I was, uh, before the quarantine and return right now, I was more teaching the kids' classes. So caring more about the kids' classes and the ordinary people classes, like, you know, like people that work the whole day and go to the academy to have fun, not athletes. So yeah, yeah. I want more about this. My, I, 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 you know, I keep it my focus in this kind of uh, clients and students. And I used to train a, a lot with them. So I'm not training the competitive level anymore. So I try to have fun on the mat, but still, you know, keeping a little, bit, a little bit in shape, not that much, you know. So I have uh, some old injuries that I have to care. So mm-hmm. I have some injuries mm-hmm. that I have to care. So I, I know better my limits now. It's, you know, I'm not kind of forcing that much because I can, if hurt, I got hurt. So, you know, doesn't have any reason to me to train so hard that they have put in risk my old injuries. You know, I mean, uh, I don't want to get hurt and not be able to go to the academy to have fun. Yeah. So I try to do every day something, you know, sometimes I go swimming and training. Sometimes I go surfing uh, and boxing. Sometimes I go... Uh, you know, just playing jiu-jitsu, but every day I try to do something, something even the week, during the weekends. So, how, uh, how do you feel, Marilla? I don't know. I always feel like if I train in the gi, I can be in more control and, and slow things down and feel like injuries are less less common. I feel sometimes no gi is a bit wild. Do you, do you train more in the gi and try and 
do less no gear for that reason or what do you enjoy doing more? I enjoy both, but I, I, I kind of, you know, because uh, uh, I always give advice to my martial, mixed martial artists to train with gi. Because most of our kids, they don't have very good, they have good background, but they need more. So that because my whole life was with gi. So I had a very good background when I was fighting MMA. So I, then I didn't, during this time, maybe, you know, I training just a little bit with gi. I training more. I, my focus was more to be a professional MMA fighter. And because I have a very good background in jiu-jitsu with gi, I didn't need to train that much with gi. So I trained more with no gi. So I, I, I spent a long time training no gi, MMA and no gi training. So then now, you know, after I returned from, you know, uh, five years, almost 10 years, I have been training a lot with gi. You know, and just sometimes I train with no gi, but I kind of training, you know, at least each 10 days I go no gi. So I like very much. It's a little bit faster. Yeah. You know, jiu-jitsu with gi is more uh, paced. So, uh, and it's super fun. You know, I love to train with gi. You know, and I'm, I'm kind of suspect to talk about because... I have a lot of fun with gi, so it's, it's a kind of chess game. So, you know, it, uh, you can you can you can make a lot of traps. You can you know trap with your make some yeah. tricks to, to, to you know for your, for uh, to catch your opponent. You know, no gi is a little bit faster. It's the same, but a little bit faster. Uh, it's, 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 uh, I believe you, 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 it's more cardio, maybe. You know. Yeah. Uh, you have a lot of uh, uh, explosions, like an aerobic training, but it's, it's more slippery so than gi. So gi is a little bit slowly, but uh, it's a strong uh, spine as well. So I have been training more with gi nowadays. Yeah, cool. And I, you know, I can control. Uh, I, I, you know, getting older, uh, you kind of uh, learn the limits of your body. So I know how my knees are, you know, my weakness and that kind of some situations, my shoulders, sometimes, you know, start to embrace my opponent and try to take him down. And then there is a risk for my shoulder to get hurt. So I kind of relax. So I don't put my joints in risk anymore because I don't have a reason for that. You know, sometimes I kind of protect my body. You know, yeah. I'm not that strong that I used to be. But I still have fun, you know, a lot training, rolling, but just protect my body a little bit. Concerning yeah. more to protect my body than before. Before when I was kind of being ready to compete, I couldn't, I couldn't save anything. I need to do my best to inspiring training because I would repeat uh, during my fights the way I was training. You know, this is the same pace and the same, you know, uh, uh, everything I did on training, I'm going to repeat during my fight. So I kind of try to train. I try to train the, 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 the hardest I could. Now I don't have this, you know, this reason to, to go so hard. So I sure. kind of go a little bit slowly. Still training hard, but more conscious to don't get hurt. Smarter. Train smarter. <laughs> yeah, getting old and getting smarter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting wiser. So is it, is it this stage, uh, Murillo, in your life is... How important is the recovery after training as well? Is it is the recovery key at this point? Uh, I'm sorry, I recover what? I'm sorry. As, sorry, what I was saying is um, at this stage in life, is, how important is the recovery to your training? Oh, very important, you know, very important. I have to, you know, uh, uh, I, 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 you know, getting older, you, 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 you learn how to respect your body, you know, and they say not anxious because... When you are pointed to the fight, you have a fight coming, you kind of get anxious to train. So, and then sometimes you train too much and then you got hurt because you, you didn't respect your body. You know, so sometimes I feel my body and sometimes I'm tired, so I start to force it. I, you know, I got a, a day off and recover my body and then I go hard the next day. Yeah. So, you know, very important recovery. Uh, 
Uh, uh, just to, just to, uh, I'd love to speak to you a bit about uh, your your mixed martial arts career and initially your transition into MMA. Um, what, what was that like for you? You, you had that uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu background, but then when you started branching out in MMA and you were obviously then having to train, obviously striking, wrestling, everything that comes with it, um, how big a change was that for you? Uh, you know, uh, I started training boxing for fun when I was a kid, 18 years old, yep. so, you know, so in Carson, I was, uh, when I was young, we were, the students, Carson, the, the, the older students of Carson, older than me, and more graduated than me, they push us a lot to train with no gi, some uh, uh, strike games in the academy. So, yeah, you know, for me it wasn't that hard because uh, I always was involved. So I tried to, uh, to make my game best possible for jiu-jitsu in all aspects, on the yeah. ground, takedowns, self-defense, uh, and when I had to fight the first time in 91, 1991 against Luta Livre, I had already some knowledge about striking. Uh, I had some boxing knowledge that helped me a lot. So I wasn't, you know, my, 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 my concern wasn't to, to, to be a striker, to knock people out. But I used my general knowledge to help me out when I was fighting. So my focus was always take the fight to the ground, to use my jiu-jitsu, take yeah. the opponent down. So taking longer, I tried, you know, after that, I, you know, taking longer to, to, to me to become a professional. And then I fought many tournaments before I went to arrive in UFC and then later Pride. And we kind of built a professional team years later, the Brazilian yeah. top team, where we had uh, we were a little bit ahead of our time, you know. We were concerning to have good coaches for each discipline. So have a very good boxing coach, a Muay Thai coach, a very good wrestling coach. Derry Goler was an amazing wrestling coach, you know. It was a, a, a wrestling uh, level A, level one in the U.S. So he helped me a lot. I, 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 you know, I, I, I was a black belt. I'm a black belt in judo. And I have very good level in jiu-jitsu takedowns. Plus, I wanted to learn more because I have a, I have a big passion for martial arts. You know, jiu-jitsu is kind of my religion, but I have my mind open to learn everything I could. So, and then <clears throat> all the knowledge that I learned during my, you know, my, my, my life, it helped me a lot for my fights. You know, getting older, you know, uh, and training more, like around 30s uh, years plus, you know, uh, I was training, you know, 35 years old, I was in a great shape, uh, training a lot of wrestling, a lot of boxing hard, you know, at the hard level. And, it, you know, it made me very confident during my fights. And then I had some, some tests, you know, that happened naturally. So I had to fight Tom Erickson. It was a huge dude, bigger than me, fantastic uh, athlete, uh, completely in shape. It was a third fight of the night. It was the final of eight-man tournament. So it was a big test for me, 40 minutes fighting the guy like big like this. And then later, I had to fight, fight Chuck Liddell. And you have seen that in the rounds was five minutes round, super you know, the time was short for jiu-jitsu players. So I had to boxing with him. So I have to test my striker game against Chuck Liddell. That was one of the best of our time. It was a fantastic striker. So I could test myself. And then, it, you know, I got a lot of confidence with this test. and made, made me strong. So and then I, I realized I was ready to fight yeah. anywhere, you know. And then for a coincidence... I got a title belt in the fight that I knocked my opponent down. And my yeah. opponent was an amazing striker. It was a David Manette. 
know, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. Um, obviously, as you said there, you got that, that title fight in the UFC and you've sort of etched your name in UFC history as a, the first Brazilian to win a belt. And going into that fight, like you said there, it was a, I believe it was a right hand that ultimately led to the end of the fight that you knocked him down with, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Man, could have repeated that. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, <laughs> My is not that good, man. <laughs> don't worry, neither is mine. It's fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you've obviously, you've, you've etched your name in history. Um, by being the first Brazilian to win a UFC belt um, in yes. that title fight, it was actually, I believe, it was a right hand that knocked him down and ultimately led to the, the end of that fight. Am, am I correct in that? Which fight? Uh, you, the, where you won the UFC belt. Yes, against David Mena. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what I was, what I was saying there is... It was your boxing that almost uh, won you the UFC belt. I'm sorry, what the, uh, about my the, boxing? The, the, Danny, you want to try your your yeah, belt? No. I, I think Morello, what you said, when you beat David Mene, it was a, yes. a right hand. You dropped dropped yes. him with a right hand. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It was a right hand. I so was not, uh, not, not jujitsu, but more boxing. Yeah, I kind of, you know, uh, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Uh, 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 I try to prepare myself to fight anywhere. You know, of course, my goal was take my opponents to the ground and fight on the ground because I was better jiu-jitsu play than anything else. <clears throat> but sometimes it was hard, you know, like Chuck Liddell. I couldn't keep him on the ground because he stand up very, very well. So I had to box him against him. And I try to be the most unpredictable possible for my opponents. So making it harder for them to, 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 to know what I wanted to do. So, you know, I kind of distract them, distract them, and then try to do something to surprise them. If I expect that I'm going to shoot, I punch. And then sometimes I punch. When they punch, I take them down, using their timing to take them down. You know, so it got, you make them confused. So if you if you if you watch the fight, uh, I, when I got the belt against David Manner, it was a second round. The beginning second round, I tried to clinch him, and then I, I my move wasn't the you know in the right timing. It wasn't perfect, and I, he almost punched me. And then I kind of got closer, you know, I approached him again. And he didn't know what I'm going to do. He probably going to expect they're going to try to clinch him. I, I believe he, you know, I, I even believe that he said something after the fight about that. And then suddenly I punched him. So, you know, I kind of surprised him with the punch. And, uh, uh, and my box was a very simple, you know, not the kind of boxing, boxer that has, a, you know, uh, I don't have that much knowledge about boxing. My boxing is just a very simple good straights, some good, you know, hooks, but, uh, but using my, 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 you know, my, yeah. my higher, my tall. Your you height, know, uh, yeah. Your reach. My height, reach. Yeah. yeah. My reach to keep the distance, you know, and make it harder for them to, to punch me. And then when I try to punch me, I take them down, approach them. So I, very simple but effective. You know, I have a good right. My right was good. So, and good jabs. The jab was the key, you know. So, my jab, I work a lot with the jab because I'm a tall guy and long reach. So, you know, the jabs bother a lot. So, I, I noticed that I, when I was fighting Chuck Liddell, my, my, my jabs was bothering him and keep the distance, you know, and, and the, the different fighters as well. So, for my for a guy, uh, the same uh, uh, reach that I have, jab is the key. Well, jab, for, jab is the, the best punch in boxing. Yeah, so you the, know, best, uh, number, the number one punch, yeah, best. Yes, man, I, and I learned that, you know, and I, it helped me a lot to keep the distance and, you know, to approach. So, it, it, one fundamental that, uh, that, I, that I learned well that helped me a lot. 
So I did, I never had a, 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 in my opinion, my boxing skills was very simple, but uh, effective for what I wanted to do, you know? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I have it in my head that when I used to watch you compete in MMA, that you were the first person I'd seen to do, you know, like an inside trip for a takedown. Yeah, is it? Drop? You, is drop? It, I, I know the, you know, the grapevine, the inside trip. Say it again. I'm sorry. You know, uh, so when you took your opponents down. Yes. When I used to, when I used to watch you when you were doing MMA, I used yes. to always, I used to always think of you as doing the inside trip quite often. You inside know what? trip. What a inside trip. Something. Like the the grapevine takedown. Where you wrap your leg around your opponent's leg and then fall on top? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yes, yes. Yeah, I, yes. I, I, using I the hook, using yeah. the hook, right? Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. I always, I, I use it. I always kind of remember you for that was one of your speciality takedowns. Yes, yeah. this is a kind of a jujitsu takedown. Very yeah, correct. Yeah. orthodox. Yeah. Very yeah. orthodox. Yeah. You learn, the, you know, this takedown, the, really the beginning. Yeah, so well, you, you got it to work from the beginning all the way through your career. Yes, you yes. Very, very good you at know, I believe I'm, 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 I'm a very orthodox fighter. So, but when you do the fundamentals, I have this in my mind. I have this in my mind. If you do the fundamentals, well done. It works a lot, you know. So if you if you doing right time you know using the timing and you know and a solid game orthodox game it works a lot so it worked it for me you know that's yeah. uh, i believe i'm approved of that sure you know? yeah. so and I, I have a concern to make a, a game very classic like you know uh so i concern more about the the efficiency of positions yeah and to be fast and approach and conclude fast all positions. So yeah. using the you know the skills not so fancy. I mean, you know, yeah. basic takedowns, basic double legs, single legs. So you know, so yeah. a lot of hooks. I like to push. I want to uh, uh, fundamentals that I, I I learn a lot to do is use the the, the fences. You know, the the, the the hopes from the boxing the, the rings. Against the opponent, I kind of squeeze the opponent against the fence, against the cage, and then I capitalize takedowns from there, using the hooks, sometimes double legs, drop into the double legs, you know. Yeah. But everything pretty much basic. Yeah, yeah. Brillo, if I could just ask you, um, you obviously left the UFC and then went to Pride. Um, at that time, what was the experience like fighting in Pride with the Japanese fans? How was that experience fighting fighting for Pride? Uh, it was it was amazing, you know. Pride at the time was the biggest show in, in, yeah. in the world. Uh, as a martial arts, uh, I had a dream to fight in Japan, to go to Japan, to fight in Japan. I believe, you know. Uh, a lot of martial arts has the same dream. And yeah. I got opportunity to do it at the time. Pride was an unforgettable show. Like the, the opening ceremony of Pride is, you know, something that just the music uh, <laughs> make me have goosebumps, you know. So it's, so it's, it's it was an amazing experience, you know. Japanese fans, they they very respect, they very respectful. They 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 know martial arts a lot, so they understand the whole aspects of fi the, the fight. You know, yeah. when you're all on the ground trying to sweep to uh, armbar, or, you know, your opponent or whatever, they understand that because they, most of them, they grow up doing some kind of martial arts. Yeah. So. Uh, 
it was an amazing experience for sure. UFC was great, you know, I, I, UFC was a great experience as well as a, as a, a business, as a, you know, uh, event of fights, competition event. It's, it's very good because when you sign a contract in UFC, you have at least two months to be ready for the fight, to prepare yourself. So the yeah. entertainment in USA is very well known. In Japan, sometimes they call you to fight three weeks before the show, four weeks before the show, sometimes two weeks before the show. So it's a little bit hard for you to be a fighter athlete and get yeah. ready. And plus you have a you know, big difference of time. So mm -hmm. Brazil is here, Japan is the opposite side of the globe. So 12 hours different. So it's pretty hard for Brazilians to fight in Japan in short, you know, short notice. You yeah. Know? Not be completely in shape. So this part UFC was better. But as a show, as a you know, martial arts show, the, the I mean the 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 spectacle huge. of it all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as you know, like a uh, was inside the Japanese culture, they have a lot of respect for the martial art, for the mm -hmm. MMA fighters. You know, winning and losing, they have a lot of respect. So it was a nice experience. How different was it fighting in front of a Japanese crowd versus a Brazilian or an American crowd? Uh, you mean uh, how the, was the, the fan? fans? Yeah, yeah, All yeah. Fans. fans like Japanese, American, Brazilian. Yeah, America, yeah. American, American. My impression, I don't know if I'm wrong, but my impression that American, they like the, you know, they like the show, they like to go there, like entertainment, like, you know, drink, get drunk and curse and scream. They like <laughs> blood, knockouts, you know. <laughs> they, they kind of, ah, you know, Japanese people, they quiet. Sitting with families, you know, kids, you know, so you see a lot of kids in the, you know, in the lap of the parents uh, watching the game. So it was a, it was a show that was starting most of them uh, during the late afternoon of Sunday. Mm -hmm. And for the, you know, it was a show for families. Yeah. So, and they have a lot of respect. They, you know, the silence was amazing. You know, when we were fighting, the, 40,000 40, people was kind of quiet. You fight a Japanese guy and they was quiet. And then you could listen clearly somebody screaming something in the middle of the crowd. Yeah. Go ahead, Sasaki, Suzuki, Honda, whatever his name, you know, was. <laughs> uh, you know, Sakuraba, you know, it's, you, could, you could listen clearly the voices because not too much people was screaming. It's not like a big noise, like, you know, when you work in UFC as a coach, you have to scream to, to you know, yeah. to make it, if you if you if you fighter fall in the opposite side of the octagon, it would be very hard for him to listen what you're saying, you know, because yeah. it's, a, it's a big noise of the crowd screaming and, and having fun, you know. So uh, now, because people fight, no audience in, in yeah. UFC Island, so you can hear everything super. Well, yeah, you know, very, very clear. You can hear coaches but, and uh, the impact he, he strikes as well. Yes, you can hear everything, but during the fights, it's pretty, it's pretty hard to, to, you know, the communication with the, the fighter. You have to scream a lot and a lot of noise. In Japan, it was, you know, no noise and a lot of respect. So it was okay. Brazilians are a little bit like the, the, the Americans. <laughs> you know, we are like... Uh, Make a lot of noise, and, you know, screaming a lot. Like to, people like to, to, to see blood. It's funny. I, I've just got um, two more questions, and I'll, I'll let Danny if he's got anything else. Um, I wanted to ask you about obviously um, you're a founder, one of the founders of Brazilian Top Team. I want to know a bit about the rivalry between Brazilian Top Team and Shoot the Box. What what was that rivalry like? Oh, it was a misunderstanding, you know, it's just, it was a kind of, uh, uh, 
it's a kind of a child misunderstanding, you know. Yeah. Uh, because it was something that, uh, you know, the Japanese. I, I was in Japan during the mm -hmm. start of Ivory. Uh, I wasn't there, but I know the history. So the the pride staff asked us to 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 receive a Japanese guy that's gonna fight in the show. Uh, Asuero Silva, that was one of the shooty box fighters. Yeah. And then, you know, they thought, they understand that, they understood that like we were kind of not being friendly with them. So mm. uh, my old partner, Maris Perry, he, he even, you know, let them know that and, you know, and so in the good way. Yeah. So, but they understood in the wrong way. Mm. And then, you know, Arona is, is, is you know, uh, strong temper, Wanderlei is strong temper. They meet in the next day during the breakfast and they kind of, you know, Arona, good morning. The guy didn't answer. And then I said, good morning. Then the guy, he started to arguing. And then from there, you know, yeah. But you know, the, after that, he realized it was a mistake. Yeah. But in the it was it, you know in the business way it was a good rivalry because yeah. uh, everybody wanted to see the fights, uh, want to see shoot box fighting against Brazilian top team and, and vice versa. You know, and Pride was exploring that, capitalizing that for the show. So yeah. you know, the consequence it's, it's was. Yeah, the consequence was good because you have a lot of fights, fighters fighting in Pride during the shows. So a lot of, you know, a lot of work for our fighters. So in this way, it was a very good rivalry. Yeah. You know, it was, it was the, the rivalry, I mean, the rivalry was good for us, you know, even starting with the, for the, you know, the silly, for the silly reason. And the, the other thing I wanted to ask you, Murillo, is, when you look at the, the, the guys fighting in this era today um, across promotions, who do you believe is the best all-round grappler in mixed martial arts at the moment? The best MMA fighter? Best, best all-round gra grappler, pure, just the grappler in the MMA. The grappler in MMA? Yeah, who do you think is the best than, at this moment? Oh, man, a lot of good grapplers in MMA, you know. The best for me, uh, but is almost retiring, was Demi Maia. Yeah. Jacare was very good as well. Jacare. Uh, yeah, Jacare, Demi Maia. Who else? Durinho is the new generation. So, who else? Cron Grace is a very good grappler. You know, he just has to find the best way to apply his grappling. You know, uh, the last fight he was a little bit to be a, uh, striking against the striker. So, yeah. but I believe that he's kind of find his way to apply his grappler. He's going to show a very good grappler for the fans. He's a very amazing grappler. <laughs> well, so a lot of, you know, the young Brazilian, you know, Charles do Bronx is an amazing grappler. Mm. You know, he's a very good striker. He's a, he's a very well, well rounded fighter. Yeah. You know, a very good, well rounded fighter. Uh, he has amazing grappling and striking as well. So, and, and Danny, if you've got anything else uh, before we let uh, Marilio go. Yeah, uh, I was just interested, Marilio, to ask you. Who, who do you learn from? Who do you learn jiu-jitsu from? You know, and who do you kind of regard as being some of the, the, the best coaches and the best gyms in the plan on the planet for teaching Brazilian jiu-jitsu at the moment? At the moment? Yeah. Do you have anybody that stands out, you know, that's that's doing, doing good things in jiu-jitsu and, and taking it to a different level? I think a lot of a lot of good coaches in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know, a lot of all teams has good coaches. You mean just Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? 
Yeah, I mean, do you, do you look to anybody? You know, I, I always, for, for me personally, uh, you know, like the Mendez brothers always stick out in my head. It's been quite, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of them. Yeah, you know, I think it's more marketing, you know, as the Mendes yeah, brothers, yeah. they, they got coaches, but they have, they have amazing marketing, they have a yeah. look up behind them. Sure. So, yeah. the, but money. they're good, they, they're good, but there are a lot of good around them, around, you know, the, the, that we have uh, yeah. in the market, but they don't have that much uh, marketing, strong market that the Mendes has. So, yeah. you know, I believe all big teams, they have, uh, you know, good instructors, you know. Yeah. We have amazing instructors in Brazilian top team around the world. So, you know, I, I believe Alliance team, has, they have uh, amazing, like, uh, Barres and yeah. Galvão and Atos, you know. All, all yeah. teams, they doing a great job. Some teams, they might fo- they, they are a little bit more focused in composition, and some of them, they're using more steroids than other. You know, so the problem is that a lot of teams making fan a big fan, you know, I mean, uh, 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 fame uses steroids. That's the problem yeah. in the market right nowadays, you know. So I yeah. know being backstage, you know, everything, you know. <laughs> so for me, it's a shame. Uh, I, I'm a kind of athlete that I, I uh, the main thing for me was to be, to be a sportsman. So completely against steroids. I, I, it's, yeah. it's one of the biggest shit in the martial arts, in the sports in general, not only martial arts, but because I'm a, I'm a martial artist, I'm yeah. talking about my, my, my community. You know? yeah. So it's one of the biggest problems that we have in the competitions. I was talking that uh, they have to test more the comp- competitors, you know, sure. yeah. in the uh, yeah, no, BJJ no, no. competitions yeah. because they only test the champion so I, I saw already you know the champion got caught and the, the title went to the second place but mm-hmm. everybody knew that the second place take a little bit more steroids than the first one so then the second <laughs> place became a champion you yeah. know yeah. so it's, it's, it's a problem that because it's a circle that the young fighters it's kind of, they believe that, uh, man, if I don't take anything, I'll, I won't be a champion. Yeah, yeah it's not fair. And yeah. being the backstage, I know some, you know, a team that, uh, the competition team, all of them, they take steroids, you know. Yeah, yeah. Buy it from the coach, the head coach. So for yeah, me, it's a shame, sure. you know. Yeah, it's, a, so, it's very, un, very unfortunate. Uh, for uh, me, it's a good, uh, you know. I kind of, uh, uh, my advice for people that want to learn jiu-jitsu is understand that jiu-jitsu, there is a philosophy behind that. It's a bushido way. It's not only to be a champion. To be a champion, you know, you take a lot of steroids, go training, and, you know, ordinary people can be a champion. Yeah. You know, but to be a sportsman, know the values, you know, the philosophy, that's most important, much more important for me. Yeah. You know, to be a sportsman. I had a... One one other question, Marillo. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what advice would you and do you give to somebody who's just a white belt, just starting jiu-jitsu? And then also, what advice would you give, say, somebody like myself who's just became a black belt in the last couple of years? You've been a black belt for a very long time. What advice would you give the white belt and what advice would you give somebody like me? Try to learn the most you can and understand, both must understand that every day, you know, is a learning day. I'm a coral belt. I've been doing jiu-jitsu for the last 44 years of my life. Teaching jiu-jitsu for the last 32 years of my life. And it's still a lot to learn. You know, yeah. a lot to learn. That's you know, cool. I yeah. know. I, I learn a lot. I know a lot. Yeah, you know, I know mm-hmm. because I was in the battlefield. MMA, Valitude, MMA. I test my jiu-jitsu in the front in the battle. You know, I was. But still learning every day. That's a long, long journey. You know, if you have, you must realize that. You know, yeah. everybody. You know, you never stop learning. You know, 
And the white belt is, is like people say, you know, the black belt is the white belt that never give up. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's, it's kind of that, you know. The, the, the that's, that's brilliant. Uh, Long journey, know. man. Enjoy, enjoy your journey. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. my yeah. advice. Yeah, you know. um, but I'll th- thank you very much for giving us some time today. It's been it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. We re- really, really appreciate it. And hopefully, like you say, 2021 is going to be a fantastic year for everyone. Uh, you, Brazilian, Brazilian top team and everyone else. So um, again, I can't thank you enough for coming on and giving us some time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for inviting me. It was a pleasure. You know, uh, I'm sorry to get so difficult to, to understand <laughs> a little <laughs> bit. But, yeah. you know. Scottish, uh, Scottish, uh, yeah, Scottish. <laughs> it's a tricky yeah. accent, but thank you again for coming on. And we will thank you, thank you, Danny. Thank you, thank you, guys, for the invitation. Thank you, my pleasure. Bye bye. Good luck.